Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue our discussion of demand. We're going to talk about things that shift the demand curve. So remember, we have our graph here. We've got the downward sloping demand curve, the upward sloping de supply curve. They meet in the middle of that point equilibrium. We're going to take this apart, concentrate on these components individually. We are still working on the downward sloping demand curve at this time. We're going to talk now about an increase in demand. If there's an increase in demand, what we're talking about is something other than price having the impact on the change in demand as opposed to if there's an increase in the quantity demanded that means that there's going to be a change along the demand curve it's a subtle difference in language but it's a big difference in concept so keep that in mind if, we, if someone says that there's an increase in demand we're actually talking about a shift in the demand curve as opposed to moving along the demand curve when we're talking about an increase in the quantity demanded so a shift would mean that Something other than price has affected it. We'll talk about the things that would shift the demand, but we can probably think of a few that would shift the demand out other than a change in price. And we would have the whole demand curve shift out. What does that mean when the whole demand curve shifts out? Well, for example, at price P, we, uh, we're here, we're now out here, meaning what happens to quantity? Quantity goes up. Price stays the same, quantity goes up. Something other than price had an effect on the quantity demanded. That means that an increase in demand, that shift in the demand curve, uh, it means that there's an increase in quantity demanded at every given price, meaning at the slope of this line at every point, there's an increase in the quantity demanded as compared to this line here. That's the concept. Of course, that also means that a decrease in demand means that there's a decrease in quantity demanded at every given price. So if we were at this price before here, and there's a shift inwards to the left, of the demand curve, then people are willing to pay uh, uh, purchase quantity fewer. So price stayed the same, but people are willing to purchase less. And again, we could probably think of a few things other than a change in price that would impact our purchasing behavior in, in certain types of goods. Let's talk about a few of them. One would be if our income goes up. So if the population's income goes up, they're probably willing to buy most, more of most goods. So for example, if we're talking about tablets, we'd probably buy more tablets. So that would be a shifting factor. There may be no change in the price of a tablet, but if the population's income goes up, you would think that people would purchase more tablets due to that fact. And because there's something other than price changing quantity, that's going to shift the demand curve to the right in this case. Now there's one qualifying factor in terms of an increase in, the, in income uh, shifting the demand curve to the, to the right. That is assuming we're talking about normal goods, which normally we are talking about normal goods but sometimes we'd be talking about inferior goods. So let's compare those two. An inferior good would be a case where if our income went down, we would actually purchase more of an inferior good. That doesn't make sense. A lot of times we just think about why, if we have less money, why would we buy more of something? But an inferior good would be something like top ramen or something like that. If our income increased, we might buy less top ramen. If our income goes down, we might purchase more top ramen. Fast foods, and another example that's commonly cited People might be going to more expensive restaurants as their income goes up and might be going to less expensive restaurants. Next item that can shift demand curve to the right would be an increase in population. So obviously if the population goes up, there's more people that could purchase the particular product and that's something other than price that could then shift the demand curve to the right. We also could have a price of substitute. So let's say that we have a normal computer here and the price of the normal computer goes up. Well, then people might say, then we'll, we'll just not get a computer, we'll just buy tablets. And therefore, if the price of a substitute, something that could take the place of a particular product, goes up, then that means that it could shift the demand curve out for that particular product that we, is in question. And then we have the price of complements. Those are things that go together. So, for example, if we're talking about a tablet, we're, we're, things like apps for the tablet, applications, games, and things like that, those are going to be complements. So, if the price of apps go down, and those two things go together, that could shift the demand curve for the tablets to the right because people would, would get a better deal in, in the complement goods in that case. Another example are uh, hamburgers and hamburger buns. Obviously, those are complements to each other. The price of one will affect uh, the quantity sold of the other. And then, of course, the reverse is true that everything we talked about. If income goes down, if the population's income goes down, then for a normal good, that would shift the demand curve inward to the left, meaning quantity demanded would be less at any given price at that point. If we talked about an inferior good, that would mean that if income goes up, 
that would actually shift the demand curve inward for an inferior good. If we had the population decrease for whatever reason, if something happened and the population goes down, that would shift the demand curve inward. And if the price of substitutes go down, the price of the computer goes down, people might buy more computers and buy less tablets. And therefore, that would shift the demand curve for the tablets in to the left. And if the price of complements, such as applications, goes up, that could shift the demand for the tablets, which the, which would the applications would be used on, to the left as well. A couple other factors, expectations and tastes. As expectations and tastes differ, that could also shift the demand curve depending on the expectations and taste. For example, if a study came out and said that the use of tablets was increasing test scores for students, then that could shift the demand.